Architectural Builder Supply is pleased to present you with this recording of the technical question that is listed in the title of this video. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. That's going to be remotely, you know, open with a with an operator. Um, and I have to put a lock on it because of the wind load that's gonna, that it's gonna be subjected to because it's gonna be solid. It's not gonna be a wrought iron gate. It's gonna be a wood gate. And my locking <clears throat> options are kind of slim because the gate is pushed to open and most of the locks that are designed for gates are for pull to open. So to not aesthetically mess up the front of the gate, I was, uh, I came on to door strikes, electronic door strikes. And one that came up was the Adams Wright 7400A. I don't have any other part number of that, but that was just, that's one part number. And, um, to my understanding, this lock can, I mean, this strike can, um, is fail secure or it's fail safe. You could switch it in a field and it'll run off at 12 volts. Um, but it doesn't draw, if it's in fail secure mode, it doesn't draw power until you actually want to unlock it. You put, you put power on it to unlock it, which will work in my case because this is going to be a completely solar setup with its own battery. And stuff. I don't want to have to run a uh, uh, you know conduit underneath the driveway in order to give it 110 for a transformer when I could just do it on a on a on a solar. So I can't use a mag lock or anything that really holds power because it'll drain the battery. So this this 7400A, <clears throat> the dimensions that I that I've seen on it. Um, it looks like it'll fit inside of a two inch by two inch square tube. Is that correct? I would say it is. Okay. Um, and it could, this, this latch, um, can it, um, like let's say the, I'm going to preload the operator onto the, to the, uh, hinge post. So, you know, there's only going to be any pressure on that lock if the wind, a gust of wind or something comes along and pushes up against it. Do you see that being a problem with this lock, with how big this gate is? Um, you know, I'm, in the specs, I think I saw something like 2,400 pounds of holding force. Um do you think that will be a problem with the lock opening? Like, let's say they have a big gust of wind. And it, you know, the bolt is pressing on to the, to the latch. How much of that can it take and still be able to open with 12, you know, 12 volts? Very little. Um, I think that, um, binding there is going to cause the unit to work, um, occasionally at best. Wait. You're breaking up a little bit. I don't think it's going to work. Okay. So, I mean, that would only be in the way of, you know, when it's windy. But on a normal day, you know, if it doesn't, if it doesn't pull up against the operator too much, like it's it's there to stop the operator from being pulled open. So, like if they had a gust of wind and it went away. And then you press the button. There's no more pre. I guess you would. Would you call that preload or something? What, what do they call it in the industry? I didn't when you have term, something. But that, but that is correct. Yeah, preload. Well, preload is not used in this application. Preload is um, when you preload is used when it comes to a closing device, not uh, to um, help illustrate the bind that would be on a latch bolt inside of a keeper of an electric strike. Okay. So, it, uh, that 35 pound, I think I saw 35 pounds of, is that the force it takes to push to latch it close? 
No. Like, how, how hard do you have to press up against it in order to close it if it's in the open position? I like, is this just closing a door? That, yeah, I think they're saying that if you have up to 35 pounds of force on the latch against the strike keeper, it will still operate. Oh, well, shoot. That's, yeah, I mean, 35 pounds, that would be a, a gust of, of wind. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm not in a desert or anything. I mean, we're down here in New Orleans. I'm not expecting to, you know, if a hurricane comes through or something, I'll just uh, use a deadbolt, like, just to, you know, drive in the ground, too. I'll have that in the driveway because I have to have that for when it's open, like, say I have a party or something like that or, you know, people are over or I just want the gate open instead of, you know, having to monitor if the gate's getting blown away all the time. You know, I'm going to have a, you know, a, I think they call it a cane bolt. It's just an L, you know, a rod, and it just goes down in the ground, you know. So, oh, uh, how how many amps does this, does that uh, strike pull when it, I mean, it's a solenoid. It can't be much. It's not. I'm not looking at it, but it's probably, um, you know, 0.2, something in that range, maybe oh. 0.3 at the moment. Oh, like 200, 200 milliamps or something like that? Yeah, 0.2 amps, 200 milliamps. Wow. Yeah, that's low. <laughs> I'm okay. not looking at it, but it's it's something in that ballpark. Right. So just from looking at installations and stuff of other um, – strikes basically you cut out the hole that's needed for the strike and then um you drill holes and then there's brackets that go in there in like i could put it inside the tubing and there's screws that hold those brackets on and then the strike the whole plate goes onto those brackets which recesses it into the tubing is that is that how it how this one um, installs to the same kind of yeah. way? Yeah, same same okay. kind of way. Okay, so you like have these little two tabs or something that go inside the tubing? Yep, we can include the tabs with the order for the strike. Okay, so that doesn't come with the strike? Not unless it's specified. Okay. So what what exact part numbers would I need? The 7400, and just indicate mounting tabs. Um, you know, I I just want to say I don't think this is going to work, and it's got nothing to do with preload on the back of the keeper. Um, I think the problem is going to be the thing hanging true plumb level and square, um, and I think that 35 pounds measured at the latch over a surface area of 18 times 7 for square feet. I think you might want to consider – um, a different piece of hardware like an, like an electric deadbolt that you can mount in the jam, and all it is is a bolt that pulls back, just pulls uh -huh. out of the way, and if you had to substantially increase the size of the hole in the edge of the gate um, so that there was an inch or so of slop so that any movement in the gate itself just going back and forth I think would be tolerated a bit easier. You're, you, in my three decades, I've never had someone try to do this, and I would love to hear how it turns out. But my, my you know, Jedi force powers tells me to, to be concerned that it may not work because strikes, electric strikes don't work well enough when it's just in the standard door, much less something 18 foot wide. So, um, all right, I have a solution to what, what you're talking about, and it's very simple, and you're going to laugh. At the pole, at the latch pole, it's simple to keep the gate plumb is as simple as putting a piece of flat bar on a ramp where uh, you could do it vice versa. You could put it on the latch pole or the fence, and you put a piece of plate. Let's just go with the pole. You put a piece of plate with a little ramp at the top of the gate, and then on the gate, you put a piece of round rod that's on the top of the gate. So if the gate ever tries to sag in any kind of manner, it doesn't matter because right before it closes, that rod hits that ramp, and it just rests up on top, and then your gate is always plumb. Mm -hmm. Make sense? And there's no the down there... I, I, there, yeah. there, now there's no down there's nothing resting on the latch. So I already figured that part out. That's 
that was, it was that, understood. that was the yeah with the it was understood there would be no vertical sag at all when you did this installation okay so what was the what was the other work so did i read it wrong cuz there should be no sag i got a 6 inch <clears throat> I, have a, I have a 6 inch by 3 eighths uh square tubing pole in a ground six feet in concrete chain walled to another four inch pole that's about four inches uh, four feet away that has rebar welded from pole to pole in the chain wall so the the pole itself i have no no problem and then the, the whole gate is going to be two inch tubing by 11 gauge which is eighth inch with five string or vertical stringers and three uh, horizontal string, basically, a, you know, a rectangle with, with cross, you know, vertical and horizontal. No, no try, no triangulated needed. So, you know, I don't think that, you know, I don't think that I'm gonna have a problem there. And then I'm also using like a, a special type of hinge that is really for commercial use, you know, up to 300 times a day or something like that. Um, you know, used for 24 seven stuff and in a residential, I'm not going to have a, ever have a problem with that. So, you know, keeping the latch where it is, I don't think that I'm going to have a problem with keeping, you know, basically what I was going to do is I was going to take a bolt and weld it to that four-inch tubing, and that was what the latch would latch onto. You get what I'm saying when the gate closed? Because I have to put the latch on the gate itself because the solar power is on the hinge side of the gate. Like the control box and everything is going to be over there, not on the house side. So I have to keep that on the gate. It can't go on the pole itself. What is the latching hardware? For the gate, I was planning... Yeah on this 7400 and then just what? the just the uh whatever fits inside of that 7400 if it's a square or whatever i just take any kind of stock you know and mill it or whatever to whatever i need it and then weld that to the four inch post so that's what the the uh the latch would actually latch on to you get what i'm saying i do um what will you do when the electric strike breaks? Just force it open and replace? Um, cut, take a, a sawzall and just stick it in between the post and the gate and cut it and then re weld it if I have to. Yeah, I mean, I thought about it. Look, I've been through a, I've been, I've been brainstorming, man. Come on out. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, listen, I'm I've, trying to I've find done... something that works, man. It's really clean. You know what I'm saying? This is a, done... this is our main gate. We, we go in this gate. Uh, we don't use our front door and my wife parks behind that. We have a carport. I'm having to build this for nosy neighbors. You know, not even people that live on the side of me. Some people a block away from me. And it's it's ridiculous, but if I'm gonna have a big gate, I'm gonna make it nice, you know. So um, yeah, I, I'm just trying to find something that works. I've done some unnatural things, things that should not have been done, <laughs> and um, I applaud your moxie. I just am. I don't believe this is the right hardware for the application. And if I was gonna do an electric strike, it wouldn't be a low-end Adams Wright unit, I would do something industrial grade like by Folger Adam or Von Duprin. Um, having said that, I think you're at a better chance with the electric deadbolt because it'll pull the same amount of amps. And the science of how the keeper has to rotate, the potential for any load is all but eliminated because the surface area is brought to as zero as possible. Um, Having said so, that, um, look, I, I'm 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 having a hard time understanding all the, the lock and uh, latch and type terms. So I'm I'm still kind of processing that. I'm very mechanically inclined. I do hot rods and everything else. That's why I'm in this position building a gate. Um, can you uh, give me a part number of a deadbolt that you're talking about? Something that you think that will work, and that way I could type it in my phone and look at what you're talking about. Um, yeah, if you just typed in the, um, what you got? 
If you typed in the word Locknetics, L O C K. Okay. N E T. M E. I C S. And then the space bar one time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the number 405. Okay. And then, and then uh, fire that up, and then it'll be, click on the first item that comes up, and when you scroll down, you'll see different pictures of what an electric deadbolt looks like. Locknetics, N-E, I mean, L-O-C-K-N-E-T-I-C-S 405. Yes, sir. Put a space between the alpha and the numeric. Yeah, there's a space. I just oh, Googled yeah. it now. Oh, I thought you were on our site. Um, okay. Uh, All right. Hold on. Locknetics 405. No, you're okay. The for When I search Locknetics 405 in Google, although your mileage will vary when you're in a different geography, it should just show our site, absupply.net, Locknetics 405. Um, absupply.net. Okay, yeah, there it is, the yeah, first link. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so All right, so at least you'll see it. All right, I thought about these, and I was on to this, but the problem I have is I only have a control one time, and that's when the gate opens up. The operator sends a three-second 12-volt signal to, you know, to whatever lock that you use, which is normally a solenoid-type lock. So I could get the gate to open up, because this one is in the fail-secure mode. Um, I could get the gate to open up, but then you would have to hold voltage on this thing, on this bolt, you know, indefinitely if the gate was in the in the open position. You get what I'm saying? And then that would drain down the battery. On no, the solar wouldn't. setup, you're just gonna you're gonna no? hold it retract for a few seconds till the gate clears the jam. You're gonna open it. You're gonna you're gonna, the bolt's gonna project, and then when you come into the closing sequence, you're gonna have a door position switch. You know, some sort of micro switch that's gonna say, "Give me, give me, oh, close the circuit to the power bolt for X seconds." It'll retract and allow you to bring back yourself into the closed position. But then how would it lock? Uh, I guess you have a timer on there. It would relock after a certain. Yeah. So I'd have to put seconds. I'd have to put some kind of switch, you said? Well, you've got to tell the, yes, you need some sort of a door position switch to tell the gate that you're closing. Um, you know, the operator, so if you have an automatic door operator like you'd hit when you walk into the grocery store, all of those have micro switches on them, and they it's like, knowing where the shaft is in position in relation to the open or closing cycle because things need to happen when it's almost closed and, you know, fully open, things of that nature. Um, so, yeah, you'd have to, you know, you'd have to have someone with an equal amount of moxie such as yourself to force that operator to behave in that way. So I talked to the manufacturer, which is U.S. Automatics. Um I have to go with that company for other reasons because of the push to open and the specs on the gate and the weight and the wind load and all that stuff and what's available in the market. We won't go into all of that. But I did ask them specifically what is their basically their logic, I guess, uh, for their locking part. And he's, he uh, told me that it only gives that three seconds. So what you're saying is this device right here, I could hook up a, a a door switch to this directly, and I don't. I could basically bypass their, uh, you know, I don't need the, their control board to control this, other than only to open when when it, you know uh, to unlock when the gate needs to open when it gets that initial signal. Everything else is. This is waiting to see a signal from a door switch to pull back, and then I set a timer that this uh, has in it to yeah. to go back out after so many seconds. Yeah, I mean, you know, you could, 
you'll, you'll need some sort of a door position switch in the closing cycle, but your opening cycle, you could have a relay, a wireless um, setup on whatever's on on your on your activator. So let's say it's a keychain fob or a garage door opener. So there'll be a receiver with a relay that will um, not only close the circuit to the power bolt, but has a potentiometer on it to give you from zero to 60 seconds or whatever the case is. You know, that could be another thing. You could get into a time delay wired in um, series so that you can have a three minute you know what's your what's your cycle open uh closed open back to closed is it how many seconds does it take 80 it says you know um I mean? it should it should be 11 uh 11 seconds or 12 seconds open to get to get open sure so let's say theoretically 12 to open 12 to close let's say it's 48 30 um, seconds to total yeah so get yourself a, a a time delay that gives you that total amount um, because the holding power expressed in amperage, amperage on a thing like this is not going to be um, that huge. The initial inrush to pull the bolt back is going to be your 0.25 amp, but a holding power after that is drops off substantially. Um, and if you can't hold that thing back for 30 seconds, you know, get get more batteries. Yeah, it runs off. Uh, man, I can't remember the the number of the battery or how many. I think it's a thirty amp hour battery. That's now that they say that huge they say battery. that that's yeah they say that that's good for five hundred and something cycles. You know, of the gate opening off of the actuator. You know, yeah, well, um, yeah, so depending the, the on you know the the volt amps at a thirty amp hour is going to be rated for is going to be far. In, advance, uh, in excess of what you'll need for this. That is a huge, that's like a Tesla. I mean, that that's a huge battery. You're, you could go, it could be Armageddon without any sunlight and you're still gonna be opening your <laughs> your gate. In this, in, in this system, but I mean, it is literally a small battery, like, but for this system is what you're saying is, it gives me that much uh, capacity, basically. I'm not familiar with your system. I play with small stuff that goes on man doors, and you know we deal with you know much smaller values uh, than a 30 amp hour battery. Um, you know, and then you. Can I mean, that's less. That's smaller than a car battery. You know. True, but you're not trying to start a, you know, a 305, a 302, or you know, a 427. All right. So let's so let's let's talk. Let's talk numbers as far as amperage. All right, a maglock. Are you familiar with those? Reasonably. How many? Do you know how much? How many amper? How much amperage that pulls? About just to hold third. it close. So about point three amps. Yeah, something like that. But you're not going to want that because um, that that is. Unless you, unless you are going to change your design where the post uh, the door overlaps the face of the post, um, or you have a Z bracket installed, the alignment is so critical on maglocks that I don't expect I expect that 7400 to work before a, a maglock. Just the closing cycle alone and the door hitting the maglock um, could cause it to not latch to begin with because you know the rate right. at which it's closing. Yeah, so you would have to have something sticking out, which, yeah, I didn't yeah. want. But but a maglock is taking 0. 0.3 amps all the time. This device would only take 0. 0.2 amps when it opens up, I mean, when, when it pulls it back. When it pulls it back and it's holding it right there. Yeah, this, this a maglock work, uh, is fail-safe. You can't, you're not doing a fail-safe system. Right. It's a yeah, it's a fail safe. So, but um, when this thing pulls back, what pushes it back forward? The solenoid, right? No, uh, when the circuit opens, there's a spring that forces the bolt back out. It's mechanical when, once the circuit opens. Whoa, 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 cuz they were I, I watched a video, not this one, but ones that are built like this. And my understanding on how these work is it needs 12 volts to pull it back, and then it stays back, but it's being held with power. And then once you close the door, the, the latch, the door has, I mean, the, 
whatever, there's a magnet plate right there, and that magnet makes the bolt come out to lock the, to lock the door again. Is that how oh. these devices work? Yeah, I mean, there is a bolt position. There is a uh, a function that you can have where when the magnet is present, the bolt knows that it's okay to relock. Um, but, you know, you can control that um, same functionality uh, with a door position switch as well. Um, but your understanding of how it works is accurate, yes. So... Okay. Uh, so once it pulls, once it pulls that bolt back, it's it's drawing power that whole time, correct? Yes. At point two amps. Uh, no. Uh, I don't know what the holding amperage is, but it's less than the initial inrush amperage. It it won't take Which nearly it, that much power to hold it back. So the inrush amperage is the point two amps. Whatever it's rated at, that would be the initial startup. Okay, so so the holding of it is less than that because yeah, I mean you're starting a basically a coil, uh, you know, like you're yeah, an inrush. It has to fill up basically, and then well, you're holding can, it. We might be able to find a motorized version where your amperage becomes all but negligible. I don't know if anyone has a motorized version. Someone may. Um, you know it's not how much it it's not how much amperage it pulls um when when it pulls it back it's that it's holding it back so like in the situation of where i want the bolt it and it has to stay back okay for when the gate closes but in those situations where i open the gate and I'm going to leave it open for six or more hours, it's going to be drawing power that whole time because it's going to be holding the bolt back. And then when it goes to close, it has to be back because if it isn't back, then it's going to get hit by the pole. You get what I'm saying? So it that that's, that's the point. That's the problem there is how long, I guess I'd have to figure out how long. And then there's a 20 watt solar panel or something like that. I could get a little bit bigger, probably. It doesn't really matter. So well, uh, I'm just trying to figure that part out. Because look, I, I like this design. Because you know what? All I have to do is cut a hole in the tubing, and then I only have to drill a hole into that four inch uh, post. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a better idea than the electric strike. Um, but the thing I is, wanted to go with this. I'm just making I'm just making sure that I'm not going to keep killing my battery, and the system doesn't battery. work or something. What's that? Get it. Get another battery. Well, if you got double A batteries uh, in your remote, you know those are that's in series. You one point five volts piece. You, your well, your voltage increases as you add more batteries in series. But when you wire them in parallel, you don't increase voltage. You increase amp hours. Put four of them. Get yourself a hundred. Well, there's not enough hours. room. There, there's not enough you, room in the box, so I would have to design but, but another box point. to hold a battery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yeah, yeah I got it. Point. So I mean, and, and in those you know instances where I just leave the gate open, I I mean, would you say that the 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 amperage is half of that, like point one volt volts? I would. Say I mean, not volts. Uh, uh, amps are like a hundred milliamps. Yeah, I'd say it's less. You'd say it's less than that? So what you'd want to do is determine your your draw and then determine your time based on what the battery specifications are and your electrician exactly. will be able to tell you quickly how that how that would all work. And you're just going to switch well, your yeah, battery could... around your requirements. Right, I could I could figure that part out, but I need to know what is the whole, what is the amperage at holding? But you're saying you think it's less than one milliamp? It's yeah, it's something in that range. It's not it's not very much. Um, there's so I mean, I could base. You think I could just base it on one milliamp? But when your battery is rated, how many amps is your battery rated for? 
I'm sh- I'm pretty sure it calls for a, the system calls for a 30 amp. I could look it up real quick. I think it's a 30 amp battery. Yeah. So if, let's just say you pulled a quarter uh, a quarter amp. You know, and you've got a 30 amp hour. I mean, do you need a theoretical 120 hours of holding time? It's, that would be a few days. There's no trouble at all with your battery keeping this retracted. This it'll keep it retracted till spring. Don't mind me, man. I'm I'm I I overthink <laughs> shit sometimes. Okay. Well, so that's how you survive? Yeah. I listen. I'm very particular. I, I like to do good work, man. It doesn't matter what I what I do. But you're there, though. You you see the math behind the simple, you know. Yeah, yeah, I see that. And, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm not going to have a problem with just holding it back. I don't have to get into any fancy uh, uh, door switches because it'll work if I just use the lot the board from the operator to open it up those three seconds. Once it's away from that magnet, it'll hold it back the whole time. I could be, I could have a party for three or four days and still have battery and it will just hold it back that whole time. It could hold it back continuously like that without burning up the solenoid. Well, it's a solenoid. So, you know, they're, you know, they have fail safe solenoids. So they're meant for continuous duty. Um, you know, so you're, you're going with the, you know, the, um, the intermittent sort of application of a piece of hardware that's rated for continuous duty. Um, plus, I think, you know, you you wouldn't need to rely on the presence of the magnet from the strike when it comes closed. Set that, get a, get, you know, I, three seconds, um, I would revisit the hard value of three seconds in terms of a time delay um, because that would preclude many pieces of hardware from working. Um, and electromagnetic locks are very common in swinging or sliding gate applications. Um, so they've got to have, they've got to have um, time because when the door comes to the closed position, they don't want the thing to clank, you know, slam and clank shut. So No, it has a soft start and stop. Um, it does have a start, a, a soft start and stop. You're talking about how the gate opens and closes no i'm I'm saying that you ought to be able to um I'm surprised to learn that that system can only accommodate a three second delay me too. I'm kind of disappointed in that too. I would look for a way to change that what I was trying to do what I was trying to do is there's a company. Uh, global access in Australia that makes a bolt, uh, a drop, like a, uh, there's bolts that go into the ground, like for a regular gate, but it's electronic. And they show on YouTube a double gate, it's got two bolts on it, uh, and they show the gate operate. The bolts come up, the gates open, they go to the open position, the, the bolts drop down to keep the, the gates anchored. When you want to close the gate, the bolt comes up, the gates close, the bolts go back down and lock the gate. And that's what I initially wanted their operator control board to do. And he says, oh, I can't write a special program or anything like that. Um, and I didn't even know that they actually, you know, they had a program on there. I don't, you know, that's beyond my scope of anything. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a computer savvy person, but. Anyway, well, I so think you, I, I, think I you want wire those two in, in series so that you have to have both conditions satisfied. Your circuit has to be closed, um, your time delay has to elapse, and the magnet has to be present. Um, so, you know, you'll be – because I'm concerned with the gate coming closed and then still having some movement – and and the uh-huh. and if when the magnet's in the right spot, the bolt's going to want to stick out. But then in that microsecond, it's moved again. Um, so I, you know, yeah, it's there's going to be some experimentation. So I saw I saw a video of a guy. I don't know who it was on YouTube that had he was showing the magnet and he did that. He 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 didn't do it intentionally. He did it on accident. It appeared. 
and uh, it was the bolt wasn't lined up with the plate, but um, it it moved over like it 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 just pressed up against the plate, but when he lined up the plate, it it went through. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, my my answer to the so, misalignment could be just making the hole in the strike far larger so that you could tolerate a half of an inch or one inch in either direction. You know, you'd have to Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that, you know, you have to play with it. So you're talking about the hole in the 4-inch post in the latch post. Uh well, the lock body will be in the fence post, the strike would be in the edge of the gate. Right. The the lock. What did you call it again? The lock. What? The strike plate in the edge of the uh, in the edge of the gate. I'd probably take the diameter of that hole, and I'd probably enlarge in it so that you could be out of um, alignment. Um, because I'm not I'm not I'm not convinced that that an 18 foot wide gate is going to stay perfectly aligned when it gets to the closed position. Even though it'll be under preload from the operator, because it'll have to stop right, again and it'll be stop. Right, I'm gonna have a piece of flat plate somewhere, yeah. like yeah. a little tab just sticking. I haven't decided if I'm gonna put it on the gate or I'm gonna put it on the post itself. If it was on the gate, it would have to be on the front of the gate. If it was on the post, it'd have to be behind the post. Right. So the this bolt has to go into the gate itself because that's where the wiring. There's gonna be no wiring going underneath the driveway. So this has to go into the two inch by two inch tubing and then the hole yeah the the hole in the four inch latch post you're saying just make it a little bit bigger just yeah. to you know give it some room yeah how are you powering your operator solar battery operated well okay it, so whatever, it's all self it, it's all self-contained yeah and, okay, is there a is there a power supply feature on that that you can run your lock to? Yes. Oh, okay. So there you it, go. Yeah, it gives twelve. It gives twelve volts. Okay. For three yeah, seconds. Just, yeah. Yeah, you you'll have to tell those guys. You know, this is what I'm going to power. You know, here's the cut sheet. You know, this is what I'm going to wire to it. Confirm you've got enough uh, headroom on what the power supply can provide for me to to do this. No, I already know that. That um this at point two, I think the other one's like an amp or something like that that pulls. The regular gate type solenoids, they're about like an amp or an amp and a half or something like that that they pull. Okay. So we're we're good on the power on the you talking about the capacity of the power supply on their board? Yes, sir. To act to actuate this? Yeah, the wet the wet contacts on their power supply will be rated for a particular voltage. So there will be a rating. You want to make sure that what you're going to wire to those wet contacts can handle. the. Obviously, the voltage has to be the same, but also the amperage yeah. that you're going to run through it. 12, 12 volts at 1.5 amps is what I'm seeing okay. on the uh, – which goes. You, and they also have a mag lock um, hookup, too. Yeah, you can but, wire – in a mag lock hookup, they won't. Um, a mag lock, they say that the, the the battery will just drain. Well, it will, of course, because you're pulling more amps. But I mean, you know, the you solar power panel off. won't be enough, is what they're saying. Well, yeah, I, I hear you. I mean, it's it's. I'm not an expert in that in that area, but a 30 amp hour battery. We don't, you know, for a mag lock know. though, it would not work because that's a continuous I draw. I don't know about that. In our in our business, you know, we deal with just typical man doors. So Friday night at the you know Bank of America building, let's say, you know, the power goes out. Well, they need those doors locked till Monday morning when engineering comes back. We can slap batteries on there to keep that um, locked, you know, over a weekend. That's easy. That's just that's just batteries, and your battery is so huge. You know, you should get that battery and get a mag lock and just connect it and, and start the timer and <laughs> see how long it holds. And right. You know. All right. So this um, – damn it. I just got out of there. Lockmatic 5405. 
so this thing will what's what's the deepness of how far how deep is that that log and how wide yeah. is it a couple of inches deep maybe two and a half it's probably inch and three quarter wide it's probably eight inch tall on the face plate so it is it is over two inches i mean i could always cut the back back half of the tubing out and just weld something on the back to accommodate it uh no it'll fit into it'll fit into a two inch space i i'm just i'm just running fast and loose with the dimensions i'm um not looking at a template but let me look at one uh the width is inch and a half wide about 10 inch tall the depth is um the depth uh, I'm going to need a hard dimension on that. Uh, ID, yeah, it's no problem. An inch and three quarters, the um, uh, depth requirement. 1.75. Um, yeah, you good. Right. That's perfect because it's uh, eighth inch tubing, so you'll have an eighth. You should have an eighth inch gap in between the mm -hmm. back of the unit and the tubing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it'll fit. All right. What does that one go for? Well, you wouldn't use that one because it's discontinued. Um, these locks are Uh, about three hundred and fifty-seven dollars is what one of these would cost. Wow! Yeah, damn. All right. <laughs> How much is that operator? Fifth? It's going to make the electric bolt look like a gumball. <laughs> it's about. That's about. It's only a third of that. That's what, that was like thirteen hundred. Yeah. I got. Anyway. Listen, man. I got. I got three thousand right now in materials and I'm doing all the work right now yeah so it's it's fun I hung a right. 180 gallon fish tank from the ceiling joists in my basement one time um so I I know what it what it, what it, what something like this can ultimately cost because you are literally designing it as you go along I spent a lot of time in the float tank to make sure that you know what I was putting up there didn't rip my, you know, first floor, you know, <laughs> right. rafters down. You know, well, you know when you're dealing with seven pounds per gallon, you got 180 gallons. Um, that was just the water alone, much less everything else. Eight was pounds a gallon. Yeah, so I hung a mid-sized car from the ceiling in my basement. Um, so I get it. <laughs> so I did. Listen, man, I designed this before I did it. I even drew it on a piece of paper with a ruler and everything, the gate design and everything. The gate originally <clears throat> was going to have a pedestrian gate, a 36-inch pedestrian gate at the very end of that gate. Um, when I did the post next to the house, there's a 24-inch gap in between, and I was like, that's big enough for a pedestrian gate. It's tight, but it's good enough for a pedestrian gate. And then uh, that's what I did. So I poured, a, I, I dug up my yard a little bit, about five foot of it, and made a little walkway right there. And there's my pedestrian gate now. So things change. I never did figure out the latching part because I just, I mean, I've been trying to figure it out, you know. So. I did like this bolt design because it was very simple and simplistic as far as how it looks when it's done and there's nothing sticking out from the poles, you know, or the gate or anything to get, you know, I mean, man, when you pass by a pole or something like that and you hit, you hit yourself on a bracket or something, that shit hurts, man. It, it <laughs> Hardware is is a is a major problem in our industry. We're taught to to minimize projecting hardware. 
I cracked right. the crown so, I mean, of it on a uh, on a doorknob one time. It was an eight hundred dollar damage. It was actually a hinge barrel. Yeah, so it's just I'm I'm trying to you know this is our house. I'm you know I'm not I'm just Joe Blow to build shit in his backyard, and that's getting messed with by nosy neighbors that can't appreciate ingenuity. So. <laughs> but does, won't the unit dissuade someone from coming up and pushing the gate open physically? Which what, what unit? The uh, operator. Yeah. I mean, I realize right, it's so, a motor and you could cycle it, but. Wh wait, what was the question again? What um, if I? Wh why do you need a lock in the first place? Meaning. Um, Wind load. Oh, oh, I understand. Right on. Yeah. Eighteen. Eighteen. Initially. All right. So. Yeah, eighteen foot by seven foot and horizontal cedar boards, one by sixes, tight together. Yeah. You got a sail. Yeah. Um, so. And the operator no. is only the operator grabs the gate only out about I think it's like a foot and a half. So I mean not a foot and a half, about two and a half feet. So it's only grabbing out two and a half feet on the gate. You get what I'm yeah. saying in the closed position, and then when it's opened, it'll be, it'll be further away because it's pushing out. Matter of fact, my driveway is 17 foot. I put the hinge post one foot, actually 13 inches off of the driveway because the way that the actuator has to pivot, if you think about the gate opened up all the way, it's pushing it up. The actuator would be parallel with it can't be parallel with the gate because it would just be pulling on the gate. You have to kick the ass end out by the by the hinge post 11 inches to get an angle to get that to be able to pull it closed when it's when it's in the open position. You get what I'm saying? Geometry. So, um, so yeah, it, there's not a lot of force there, and yes, wind or somebody, if they really wanted to, they could push it open. It's a linear ball type, ball screw type, lean, uh, actual, uh, linear actuator is all it is. So, I mean, technically, somebody could overpower it. It won't, it doesn't back up by design, but somebody could, you know, break the bracket, the, the, uh, the, U.S. Automatics even admitted that, you know, their bracket had broke on one of their own gates and they beefed it up and that was the, pro you know, that was a problem. It wasn't the actuator itself that broke, but, you know, bracketry, you know, you could bend stuff. Um, so the lock at the end of it, you know, in a windy situation or even for security, uh, if somebody wanted to try and pull it open, and you know, it could break the gate or bend the gate or whatever. You have a lock in place at an 18 foot, you know, point away from the hinge, which is better than, you know, having 18 feet of leverage on something, you know, to, to pull, to pry open, right. if that makes any sense. So, Richard, I really appreciate your help, man. Um, this, that, that price, that three hundred and fifty dollars, that comes with the plates and everything. Yeah, it'll be the lock body, and it will come with the strike plate. Okay, and the strike plate has the little magnet in it that they yeah. sent as it to close. Re yeah, it'll have a relock on it. Okay, and this is a commercial unit. Well, I mean, I got people that put them on swinging gates at their house. Um, yeah, they're they're meant for commercial applications, but people like yourself, uh, you know, someone's building something custom. Yeah, the, I like these because they get the job done, and you don't know they're there. They're simple and reliable, and they're cheap. Right. Yeah. Compared to that operator. <laughs> uh, no, compared to the steel, compared to the welding time, all of it. Yeah, I mean, Dude, I, I took the, welding the, and the, the wood is more than the steel. Right on. Of the wood it is. It's 
it, yes. It, it's stupid right now. I got four hundred and four hundred and fifty dollars in steel, and the wood to put on there is like eight hundred and sixty something dollars. Yeah, it's stupid. So, yeah, I mean, but if, if you're, you know, but back to the, um, you know, to the electric strike thing, I mean, that's uh, going to certainly be less expensive. And, you know, at the end of the day, you could also, um, if it doesn't work, you're going to have to go a different route. Um, so whatever your gut tells you. My gut tells me the bolt type is better, and that's the way I wanted to go when I first seen it. I saw when I first saw one of those, I was like, "Man, that would be awesome," and and very just simplistic, simple as that, yeah. and clean looking. It'll, it'll look very clean, you know. Yeah. And I could even secure it from the outside, by putting the flat plate on the gate itself to stop the gate, uh, you know, so somebody couldn't just take a sawzall and just cut, you know. That I mean, if they wanted to get it. Uh, they could go around the other side of the freaking house. <laughs> I don't have a gate up over there yet. <laughs> so yeah. I don't see also, any of that. You could also, with this type of lock, um, you could add cylinders to it so that, you know, if you had some sort of electrical problem or operator problem, you could manually unlock it to operate the unit. They make cylinder overrides as well. Oh, on this right here, I could just put like a key in it they, they while it's in the lock position this. if it fails. Right. Yeah, they make versions of that that will take cylinders. Okay. Are they any more expensive? Oh yeah, a lot more. <laughs> oh Jesus. Yeah. I'm gonna stop talking to you, Richard. You making me. Anyway. You making me have to spend money. But my look, well, man, I really appreciate sure you. Uh, yeah, man, I, I appreciate that. I really appreciate it. What, almost an hour on the phone about a gate lock. So, uh, you have a good day, man. Let me get back my butt back to work. I got grass to cut. Understood. Very good, sir. Thank All you right. very much for calling. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Architectural Builders Supply hopes you have enjoyed this program. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.